Good evening. In today's New York Times, we had an editorial by Professor Mankiw, who was Bush's economics advisor. He has a tricky way to deal with the ongoing depression that we're now in. This depression was started long ago. The effects of it did not show up until very recently. A lot of people don't understand this. They think that these things just materialize out of thin air, but they don't. We know from history that all depressions follow right on the heels of a bubble bursting. Usually these bubbles are what we call equity bubbles. Namely, people bid up the price of all sorts of things, whether it be tulip bulbs, or it could be the Mississippi shares, or the South Sea bubble um, <laughs> documents. It doesn't matter what it is, they'll find something. It's often real estate, because that's an easy thing to get loans for. Or all bubbles are based on lending. Usually someone starts lending money like crazy and everybody jumps on board because then they can bid up the value of things because the flow of money coming into lending is so great it wants to flow like this into every possible corner of an economy. And then when that source of money dries up for one reason or another, we get a crash, which is why all bubbles are to be assiduously avoided and not encouraged. And in fact, the Federal Reserve itself often talks about not allowing bubbles. Like um, Greenspan said, said once that we should take away the um, punch bowl while the party's still going. But they never do that. They wait till the punch bowl's completely drained and then they say, whoopsie, everybody's drunk and the whole thing's been trashed and the building's burning down. Anyway, let's read this editorial by Professor Mankiw. He says here that we have to find out a way to make holding money less attractive. In the Great Depression, everybody who was called, who was saving money, but not putting it in banks, was called a hoarder. Hoarders were supposed to be evil people, and they were to be stopped one way or another. For example, FDR took away everybody's gold by fiat. He simply said you had to sell your gold to the government and he was going to pay you whatever price he chose and then the value of the dollar would be then dropped relative to gold by 50% and tough luck buddy, <laughs> you're stuck. You could not use gold for money nor could you enforce gold contracts that were written under conditions where the United States still had gold as our financial basis. So anyway, he says here, we have to make holding American dollars less attractive. <laughs> now remember, as we read this, we aren't the only holders of U.S. dollars. There's a whole bunch of other people in the world who hold them too, and who might not be very pleased if we play games where the dollars become less valuable to hold. Though it may be an interesting experiment, I can assure you it will not turn out nicely. He says here, Imagine that the Fed were to announce that, a year from today, it would pick a digit from 0 to 9 out of a hat. All currency with a serial number ending on that digit will no longer be legal tender. Suddenly, the expected return on holding currency will become a negative 10%. Now, is the problem having to do with cash? Do we have people who actually have dollar bills that they're holding? Or do people mostly keep their money in bank accounts that are done by computers? So what this will do is that it will make people less likely to hold cash, but then they'll put it somewhere else. Where would they put their money now? Let's see. Tink, tink, tink. I'm going to ask Pegasus here. Where are they going to put their money if the government's going to cheat them out of it through the magic trick of pulling a number out of the hat? And Pegasus says, I am made of gold. <laughs> they all come to me. And of course, the price of gold will shoot through the roof. Anyone holding gold now will become extremely rich, and a lot of gold bugs will be happy and bless them all. They've played a game with the government, and the government lost. Of course, the government hopes that we buy things that are manufactured. Oh, who would like that? Ah, I can think of somebody who would dearly love to have us spend all our money on manufactured stuff. In fact, a whole bunch of somebodies, about a billion of them, and that is everyone in Asia. 
because that's what we'll be buying stuff from Asia. We're not going to be buying things from ourselves. Oh, no, no. The Asians will, of course, have to play currency games in order to keep the dollar strong after this threat to take a magic number and then wipe out everybody's cash this way. And so there will be a run away from the dollar for cash for doing business overseas. And they will go to some other currency, and I would suggest the euro, though the yuan and the yen are both rising in across the uh, landscape here as potential safety zones if America plays stupid tricks like this. Mr. Professor Manico is not a nobody. He was an advisor to a president, and he's still very powerful. He has a job teaching Americans to think these tricky thoughts. Oh boy, I can cheat my customers. For this is cheating. This is not being honest at all. Let us continue. It says here, Oh, this seems too outlandish. <laughs> no kidding! <laughs> there is a more prosaic way of attaining negative interest rates through inflation. Oh my god! Stop the presses, or rather start the presses. Has the Fed ever resorted to inflation? Obviously. They do it all the time. The value of the dollar ever since we created the Fed has dropped by 95%. Now, that's not a very good record, is it? It's certainly not stable. No, no, no. They always use inflation. Always, 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 without exception. This is nothing new. Now, here's Mankell talking some more about this tricky trick they have. Suppose that, looking ahead, the Fed commits itself to producing significant inflation. Ha <laughs> ha Have they done that before? Oh, I remember. Oh boy, do I remember. I lived through it. I had to work. I had a child at the very beginning of the hyperinflation era. And I went through hell. And I will never forget that. And I don't want anyone else to go through it. Nobody should go through it. Anyway, in this case, while nominal interest rates could remain at zero, real interest rates, the interest rates measured by purchasing power, could become negative. If people were confident that they could repay their zero interest loans in devalued dollars, they'll have incentive to borrow and spend. Oh boy, the spendthrifts of the world will have a great time. They'll be happy as pigs in a pigsty full of slop. Anyone who saves money, anyone who's honest, anyone who's paid off all their debts with real dollars based on a real economy will be punished. And what we're supposed to do is subsidize these people. And do you think this hasn't happened before? Manicow is pretending that this is a new idea that just flipped into his brain. I'll tell you something. As a saver, all my life I've been extremely irritated about the fact that I pay off my debts and I live in a sensible way so that my bills are paid on time and I keep everything on an even keel. I even lived in a tent for 10 years in order to avoid going into debt. That's how strong I feel about it. Anyway, I'm honest and I know a lot of other people who are equally honest or even more honest than me <laughs> and they're going to be punished so that people who are spendthrifts can spend money and create even more inflation because lending is inflation. The more money we lend, the higher the rate of inflation. The lower the interest rate and the more people pour into the lending markets and the more people borrow, the more inflation we get. When we get inflation, anyone saving money finds out their money's shrinking while the people who are borrowing get richer. And the scales go like this. They can't do that. That's why our country's collapsing now, is because we did this for too many years and they're going to do it all over again to us. And already I can see inflation in the grocery stores and it's coming everywhere else. No kidding. This is their plan. And this was Elaine Supkis of Culture of Life News.